G'day fellas and welcome to a casted game. Spawning in over on the west side of the map, playing as the Red Chinese, we have got Crackety here. For anybody who doesn't know Crackety, he's a good friend of Kenoki. Kenoki, for anybody you're unfamiliar with, uh, it is, or for anyone who's unfamiliar with Kenoki, he is one of the top theory crafters for Age of Empires 4. And uh, this is part of one of his openings that he loves to do. The, the classic five and one, five villagers on food and uh, one villager on wood. This way, you don't have to you don't have to worry about those three villagers on wood. Instead, you can go straight on to gold after it. But it's going to be a double scout opening here from Crackety here. He's going to be going up against, you guessed it, in sporting it over on the east side of the map in the color blue, playing as the Mongols. We have got the one, the only, the Viper. Yes, that is right. The Viper is here. He is back. He's playing the Mongols, and we are on Dry Arabia here today. Looks like it's going to be a double scout opening from the Viper as well. But let's talk a little bit about how this matchup is going to be going in and what we expect to happen. So, obviously, the, Mongol, the Mongols, rather, typically the aggressor in this matchup. But we have seen a bit of a shift, a bit of a turn in the tide because... There's something in the water for all these Chinese players. They've been tower rushing like crazy. I don't know exactly what it is that's made them start doing it, but it has been insane. We've seen it in the, the uh, Golden League. It's been happening. It's been happening at the high ranks on the ladder. We've seen a lot of top players that are testing out the, the Chinese tower rush. And I think largely the reason why it's so effective is because obviously you've got the Barbican, but you also have that extra build speed as well on your outpost. So you build them twice as fast as other civilizations. Even though you're only meant to build them 50% as fast, for whatever reason, I think the game might be bugged that gives you an extra 50% on top of the 50% you've already got. So China builds their buildings 100% uh, times faster or, or double. Um, and for whatever reason, they, they build their defensive buildings only 50% faster. Uh, so uh, maybe defensive buildings means walls. Maybe that's the re maybe that's the difference. But it looks like for Viper, it's going to be a pasture opening. So no sign of aggression. And if this gets out, scouted out by Crackety, uh, and you can see his his uh, scout is in the area. If he spots that pasture, he might be thinking about doing a little bit of a naughty because this is something that I would typically do in this matchup. I've been I've been doing it a lot. I've been having a lot of fun with it, and it just seems to work. Tower rushing the tower rusher. It just feels good. There's something that feels good about it. Uh, but uh, we'll have to look at how he's actually playing it out. He's got eight villagers on food, which is what I would say too many. Uh, but you would you would think that that's too many. But if you're doing if you if you're going for a barbican rush, that is the perfect amount because you're able to take these eight villagers and immediately move them off uh, towards the base of the enemy. And also gathers you up that food a little bit faster, so you can actually walk or, or start that walk out. You're going to be lagging a little bit behind on gold. So I wonder if Viper actually spots that out. I, look, I doubt he's going to be counting villagers that are on food. In fact, he only sees six that are there. No, he should see eight there uh, now. But um, Mongol Scout now, or Mongol Khan going to be coming in. Sheep going to be there, chilling out, obviously just harassing the vi the villagers on the gold mine. He already spots out that gold, so he knows there's nothing too sneaky coming out just yet. We'll check in with the Viper. Over towards his base. Looks like there's going to be quite a fair few villagers on gold for him. Now, this is a little bit... This is a little bit interesting. Something we don't always see. Oh, look at that. Viper's going for an early wheelbarrow build here. This is interesting. I, I, I haven't seen this before off a Mongol player. Actually, no, I do take that back. We have seen it once before. Uh, I do remember there was a game from the Golden League where, where we, we got to see a an early wheelbarrow coming out from the Mongol player. Uh, so it, it does make sense. Obviously, it's a, it's a great way to focus on your economy. Uh, and it looks like we've got some units moving across the map. Indeed, it is going to be a villager rush or a Barbican rush. Now, one of the things that you'll see here is there's an outpost that is going down for Crackety. This outpost here is going to allow him, because the Barbican's going to take too much time, this outpost is going to enable him to to gain a foothold so that he can always fall back towards this. Now, what Viper would need to do in this position if he wanted to, to, to deal with it immediately would be to pull the gold villagers as well, but they're so far away. And then you could actually siege through that outpost and just kill the villagers. Sure, that, that works. Uh, but the safer option for the Viper here is just to drop an outpost of his own. But you can see that he doesn't actually have the wood to drop down the outpost because he's gone into what is a little bit of a, a I guess you could call it a greedy build order. So now we've got that Barbican coming down. It's going to be dropping down on the Uvu. Now, obviously, Viper playing as the Mongols. He's going to be able to pick up and move his base. That Uvu, though, the longer he keeps it here, it acts as a double-edged sword. Of course, it's bringing in stone, but it means that you're not able to double produce. Now, Viper's going to be able to replace his Uvu, and you can see he's even moving the pasture over towards the second Uvu location. Uh, but th this is where it becomes a bit of a double-edged sword because you can choose to willingly throw away your Uvu if you rebuild it, because remember, you can only have one as the Mongols. Um, but if you do that, then you're wasting that, that wood away. 
looks like Viper is going to be going up against a pretty scary opening here. We do see a Lumber Camp coming down for Crackety on the front side as well. So he's looking to begin taking resources. Only going to be pushing forward with a couple of villagers. Deerstone's going down. This is a little bit of a scary spot here for the Viper because now he might get caught in a bad... And you can see that Crackety's recognized this, pulling the extra villagers out. He's only got six of them at the moment. He may have lost a couple in the transition. I'm not sure exactly what happened. But now we can see the villagers going to be fighting off against each other. One or two villagers just going to be tapping away at that Deerstone's. And Crackety looking to try and fight around this position with the outpost. He's got to be careful here. Going up against the Mongols. This is a very greedy outpost because if you cancel this outpost, which if he does right here, he's going to be giving over the bounty to the Viper. So you, every single outpost that you let him get tags on like that. Okay, good cancel. That was a good cancel for Crackety right there. But ideally, what he, what he needed to do was daisy chain these outposts in just like this one. This is a perfect outpost. This is going to be the first one that comes down. And then your second one, you're going to be looking at dropping it right here where he initially went for. But those villagers continuing to move up. You can see that they're actually going to be under, under attack from that bar. Barbican, one villager going away. He's going to be taken out there. Viper knows he can't come in underneath this position. Going to be jumping inside that outpost. We see arrow slits or hand cannon slits coming through immediately. Now going to be pushing up with that next outpost. Ideally, you could go up a, even maybe a little bit further right now, knowing that you've got that position. Uh, but you, you've got to be careful of the town center. I'm not sure if you guys saw the town center was able to shoot towards those villagers. And now Viper going to be looking to rush up this steer stones. He knows he's in trouble right now. He's going to be jumping. And Crackety actually cancels the outpost. Unfortunately, there's been a lot of cancellations that have come through for Crackety right now. He's looking like an airline in the COVID pandemic. It is just terrible stuff for him. But Deerstones is going to be able to get away. Viper manages to make it up to the second age. Let's do a little bit of a stock take and see exactly where he's at right now. Villager count sitting at 21 villagers. So he's lost a few villagers. We've seen that. The, the Deerstones is going to be able to come down, buff up all of the villagers here. But we can see Crackety now moving out, or rather Viper moving out towards this hunt towards the north. He's got the Gur coming down. Textile is going to be coming through for him as well. And still, he's got that Uvu that's just chilling out. And remember, every second that he leaves this Uvu alive, it is going to be coming up as an attack notification. And it's also going to be an Uvu that he can't utilize. He's not going to be able to have double Lancer production, double Archer production, double Villager production if he wanted to do that. You guys get what I mean. It, it is one of those things that it's like, it, it's a double-edged sword. Because the longer you leave this, it is going to drain away that stone. Uh, but at the same time, you're not going to be able to use it until you actually get a second one down. But uh, we'll tune in now with Crackety because what is his game plan from here? The game plan behind this, and, and this is something that, that you see often. So you're looking to try and encroach upon your Mongol opponent as much as possible. And you can see this villager moving up towards the north. He was going for a cheeky little outpost. Viper going to spot him out, though, and indeed sees that villager. He's going to be able to chase that one away. Uh, so what... what uh, Crackety wants to do here is look to try and expand up towards Viper's north side because this is where the resources that are very key. So as an example, this gold mine here, this is going to be key. There's more gold mines down towards the south and Crackety looking to try and secure that up. Uh, but the big thing here is to continue expanding out the outpost network. Viper's going to be looking to try and get up to a castle age so he can clear these out with trebuchets. He can obviously do it with battering rams as well. Villager going to be going down here. So he can look to clear it out with battering rams, but the problem is if he does clear it out with battering rams, he's going to be committing himself to a fair bit of a long age too, and that's exactly what China wants. Yeah, and you can see from the resources behind here, we're probably going to have a second town center coming down very, very shortly. This is the optimal location. Imperial Academy will go down here. Second town center will come down there. Uh, that, that is if if Crackety's good at base building. I can tell you that much now. If Crackety's good at base building, that's going to be the case. And now an outpost coming up for the, vi the Viper. And this is something to remember. This outpost is great at preventing... Uh, raids. Okay, let's say a raid comes through. Great, you just jump in inside of the outpost. But if there is an outpost that's already established, it's going to be able to focus down the villagers here, and it's going to neutralize this gold vein. And this is what makes this outpost coming down from Crackety such a smart investment, because it guarantees that Viper can no longer use this gold. He set himself up with a nice little outpost. He was even putting down a Gur, but now he's going to head back to his base, and you can see that there's no gold towards that northern side. Absolutely nothing. The only way he can really progress is down here to the south side. He's got a number of options. He's also got options on the enemy side of the map, but when you take a look at the way Crackety's playing it out, it's going to be very difficult for him to get through that. Emplacements now coming through. Hand cannon slits. Uh, this outpost, I almost feel like it's a little bit of a unnecessary investment here for Crackety, just because this outpost does everything that you need to do. You can see Viper now going to be forced away from this position. Village is going to have to walk away, and this outpost is, or th this gold vein has been neutralized. And now, continuing to expand, Crackety actually spots out a couple of villages on this south side. We can see they are continuing to come through. 
Second town center has been dropped down. So Krakeny knows his base building. This is exactly what you want to do. And now the village account starts to build up for the Chinese player. So from this point, everything has just been going pretty standard. But now, now there is a win condition for the Chinese all of a sudden because it is the village account. And that's really where you can expect this strategy to start getting big. Look at that. Crack and he actually spots out villagers on the backside here, going to be moving forward. Now, he's obviously, his enemy's got an outpost up in this position, so he's going to be able to spot this out, and we can hear them. I, I, I thought I heard some rolling then of a battering ram, but it's not going to be the case. In fact, Viper looks intent on going towards that castle age, looking to try and drop down this, this, uh, uh, Gur down on the mining camp, or, or rather on the on the gold vein. Barbican still firing off at that one outpost, or town center is continuing uh, to make villagers, but you've got to be so careful with those villagers. You can see a lot of them underneath the town center are already quite damaged. There's one in there. Let me see if I can select it. There we go. 39 health remaining on that bad boy. So you've got to be really careful because your villagers will be tempted to come over towards this sheep carcass. And if they do, you will be losing villagers. Uh, but now it looks like more outposts coming in and Crackity doing the right thing. And remember behind this, Crackity is booming. That is the big thing. That is the big thing for China. Behind this, they are booming. And so it, it is like, it's only a matter of time before the Chinese economy really starts cementing itself ahead of this. But let's start talking about the transition periods because it looks like the Viper's going to get up. Now, he's going to be careful when he places down his landmark because he may not know, but Crackity is obviously aware of this position. And if there's outposts that are coming up down in this fog of war, this could be really bad. So Viper looks to expand over here. This is going to be an incorrect decision. Ideally needs to expand with these villagers in his base uh, or, or, or drop down that step route. Even though it might be tempting, the problem is you're going to get interrupted if you're over here because I guarantee you, Crackity, he is... He, Okay, there, there we go. <laughs> Crackity is on the move. He's, he he knows about Viper looking for, you know, additional resources. That outpost is going to come down. And we can see the villagers moving into position for the step right out. But as I mentioned, this is exactly what you would expect to happen. The outpost is going to jump up. Village is going to jump inside it. And now they're going to be... You see arrow slits coming through. And now we've got a problem for Viper. He's going to have to cancel this step readout. There's no way that this one comes up, unfortunately for him. And indeed, it does get canceled. Now those villagers are going to have to fall back. And remember, now that this outpost is up, neither of these gold veins can be mined by the Viper. And that leaves him with a very difficult position because he's got no gold that is available to him. Sure, he's got outposts up on those gold mines, which is going to be great in the event that raids come through. And we do see the step readout now coming up in the base of the Viper. But the Kraken he's just got perfect vision of his enemy's base second outpost now coming up over on this flank so if there were any questions about you know the the potential security of this position it has been absolutely wiped out now and now crackety looking to just mine up a, a lot of wood over on this front side we'll take a look at his base and see how he's booming still no dynasty coming in just yet for crackety he's actually looking to get the wheelbarrow through though bit of a, a late wheelbarrow 12 minutes but it's about where you'd expect it third imperial official coming out as well he's gathering up the gold still no imperial academy great spot for it here though he I I think he's intentionally left this spot for the Imperial Academy. It will pick up the mill, pick up the gold mine, pick up the lumber camp as well. Uh, and if you put it close enough, it might even pick up the next lumber camp that you do put down. But just attacks happening absolutely everywhere right now and continuing to push forward with outposts. Look at Crackity being very, very cheeky and Viper knows about it as well. Looks like that outpost is going to get forced down. This is the consequence of playing up against the Mongols in this position here because against the Mongols, every, every outpost that you do cancel like this, they will be getting a bounty. And so you're going to be giving them rewards for, for challenging that. So if there's any Civ that actually it makes sense on challenging outposts coming up with villagers, it's the Mongols just simply because of that. But you can look at the uh, attack alarms right now on the minimap. They are absolutely everywhere. Every single part of Viper's base is under attack. And now it looks like a siege workshop going to be coming down on the front line. Indeed, he decides against it. Uh, probably a bit better on the backside. And indeed, we do see the backside coming through now. Still, I'm, I'm impressed with this sheep carcass. The fact that the villagers haven't made their way over to it yet. It's still sitting on 152. So Viper's done a really good job of just making sure that the villagers don't go down here. Because if they do, they will be lost villagers. And good luck trying to spot those out with the amount of alerts that you've got going on right now. Like, look at Viper's minimap. One, two, three, four, five... I'm pretty confident that's five. Look at the villagers going down. Villagers going down here on the wood line. Viper now stuck in a bad position because his villagers on the wood line are getting fired through by the, the outpost on the backside. And now this is where I'm starting to think, maybe, you know what might, might be a decent thing? Can we, can we change it so that arrow slits as well as... Make it so arrow slits as well as hand cannon slits go from eight range to six. I feel like that just makes it such an, a better... It makes it so much nicer to play against because this is so... Can you imagine Viper right now? He's... I mean, it's Viper. He's probably he's probably like, the house is on fire. He's like, it, everything is fine. You know, Viper is such a cool cool character. But now that traction trebuchet is going to be coming out here. No improved siege engineering. Why not? Because the Uvu is stuck down here. He can't get that in... He can't get the uh, blacksmith down here for the improved siege engineering. Instead, going to be dropping down that siege workshop, investing heavily into his siege production. 
first trebuchet. Going to be going down. First uh, outpost of the game. Going to be going down here for Viper. Doing a good job. We'll check in with Krakeny and see how he's going as the Great Wall of China is now being built over on his side of the base. And I got to say, I love this play from, from Krakeny. So where does Viper go from here? Viper goes into a, highly likely into a Lancer comp. In fact, both of these players, uh, in, and there you can see beautiful base building coming through from Crackity right there. Sorry, I'm just just catching my breath here. But Crackity doing 100% the right thing. This is perfect placement on his Imperial Academy. It, I, I love watching, uh, you know, friends of Kanoki play because they know how to base build. Kanoki, he's a big fan of base building and he teaches people how to make good bases. This is a perfect little Chinese base. I love it. Uh, but uh, now we can see that Kanoki, or Kanoki, <laughs> Krakity here is continuing to expand. Interestingly, hasn't yet picked up Imperial Examinations. Um, but... Uh, is continuing to expand. And the big thing here is that Viper wants to try and get back into this game through Lancer Raids. That's going to be how he does it. The only way he can really catch up to Kino to Kino oh my god, I said it like three times now, to Krakeny here, is by doing that. And it looks like Viper is going to be switching off the Uvu. 36 remaining on this one. He's going to just be pulling this one up at the last second. And you can see this one is going to be cancelled. 28, 24. Indeed, it gets cancelled with 24 stone left in it. And now that traction trebuchet firing off stones, boulders towards that outpost. It's going to be coming down now. But... Uh, He's doing a decent job of cleaning this up, but the, the, the problem is, look at the amount of time that Viper has had to eat, like, look at the amount of time that Crackity's bought here. Viper is sitting on 30, 39 villages. He's on the one town center at the moment, at the moment, I say. Uh, he's on one town center with 38 villages. Jeez, it just, it just keeps falling down. It just keeps falling down. Meanwhile, over on the other side of the map, we've got Crackity, who's on 71 villages. Now going up to age three himself, we see the Khan moving forward. Great walls coming up from Crackity all the length of the, the entirety of the map. In fact, this one, you've got to be a little bit careful. One villager could come through and chop that easily. Uh, but we've got outposts that are coming up along the, the length of the wall as well. So just when you thought that there might be a chance, in, in fact... Crack and he says no, no, there's not. And just tapping away with two villagers on on the uh, on the landmark as well doesn't really need to rush this one up because he's happy in his position. He's going to keep making villagers. You can see he's got plenty of villagers in production here, and he's working behind. And now the transition comes in. Stables, perfect play from him. So from here, ideally what he wants to do is go into lances with keep drops. The, the lances and keep drops. So for anybody who doesn't know about this this build order or this strategy, this is the way that you, you would essentially finish off the opponent. It would be lances and keep drops because they're going to be making trebuchets to try and take out your outposts. So what you're going to do is commit with your lances to killing those trebuchets and at the same time dropping keeps on top of them. So that's what I'd expect Crackity go, go, to go into. And we can see with the large amount of villagers he's got on stone that you would probably be expecting... Oh, that, oh that's a mill. I thought it was a mining camp. I was like, yeah, as, as you can see, I'm right here. Uh, <laughs> but uh, now that age up's going to be coming through for Crackity. Uh, and so we'll take a look over at the Viper and see how he's doing because I wouldn't be surprised. In fact, you can almost see it is certain that a second town center is going to be coming up for him. He knows that he needs to catch up to that Chinese economy. He's got barely any information as a shaman begins to move out across the map. But just keep in mind, sure that shaman might be able to capture the, the, the sacred site, but the outpost here is going to be able to provide vision of it. No emplacement means that that outpost or that uh, sacred site is going to be able to be captured there for the Viper. So a small victory coming up for him there. But uh, we continue to see that there are lances now coming out as well for Viper. He's done a pretty decent job of securing up this backside. But the, the question is, at what cost? At what cost? It's just taken so long. And this is part of the reason why the Chinese tower rush is this damn good. Second town center now coming out for the Viper here. He's on 45 villagers. Compare that over to Crackity, who is sitting on 89. So quite literally double the amount of villagers. Well, one villager shy of double, but you guys get the point. Uh, but uh, that, that is a, a significant difference. Crackity continuing to expand out now. And uh, now we start seeing the Lancers moving out. Going to be able to pick up a couple of villages over on the Viper's side. These guys were stuck in that outpost. Uh, we've also got a wolf getting in on the action as well. Because why the heck not? Everybody else is getting a bite. So I might grab one as well. And now those Lancer numbers are starting to look good for the Viper. But this is what I was talking about. You know, you, you would expect that Viper in this position goes Lancers and tries to get himself back into the game. But now the problem is that... You, that we have got... I don't... How did I select attraction trebuchet there? That, that That's a selection bug. Uh, I'm not even kidding you. The Muslim gets this bug as well. I don't know how it happens, but you just select a random part of the map and sometimes you'll just get a trebuchet. It, it, it's the weirdest thing ever. And like, if we look right now where the trebuchets are, there's one over here. 
There's one up here. Like, I, I think there's only two traction trebuchets out for the Viper. Let, let's check. Uh, where is the button? Right there. Yeah, he's only got two traction trebuchets out. I don't know how I selected the, that traction trebuchet, but there you go. Uh, but uh, Viper now looking to try and get some pastures down, looking to focus on his economy. He's got plenty of villagers coming out, but remember, he's not going to be able to match that in that English, that uh, Chinese uh, economy because there's the Song Dynasty as well that's at play, which essentially means that Krakeny is sitting on three town centers, not two. Now we start to see the Lantern numbers beginning to come out. Looks like plus one ranged armor going to be here for him. And Kraken, he's going to be pushing through with quite a huge amount of Lancers. We can see he's got plenty of them, and he's supervising both of his stables up. The equivalent right here of five stables pumping out non-stop Lancers. You can see them rallying towards the front. Cracky continue to come through, and we see plus one upgrades coming through. Plus one attack, plus one ranged armor. And he comes in underneath the town center and looks to cause a bit of damage. He spots out the second town center there for his opponent. It looks like we've got some Lancers coming through. It's going to be an attack speed arrow that gets fired off by the Viper. He's trying his best to hold onto this position. The Trebuchet on the backside going to be coming through. But Crackety over towards the base. We've got more reinforcements coming through. Barbican of the Sun still standing steadfast. Lance is on the backside, going to be looking to siege down this traction. Trebuchet and not a lot of health on it. He's going to be careful. Ideally, you'd love to see him pull villagers. But remember, in Age of Empires 4, there's no way to pull villagers from the town center, just one or two. He's going to pull five from the outpost, though, and manages to keep it alive. But at what cost? Looks like it might be at the cost of a handful of villagers. Crack, and he's still doing a really good job just sitting underneath this town center. And Viper is definitely on the ropes at this point. We'll check in on Viper and see how he's doing. 50 villagers for the Viper right now, of which 36 are idle. Traction Trebuchet probably going to be going down here on this Viper manages to make it out. Indeed, he does come out here, but those villagers are going down straight away. You can see he's just so on the ball with it. And now we've got more reinforcements coming in towards that base from Viper, or from Crackety rather. And Crackety's looking to try and funnel in plenty of those reinforcements. And now that trebuchet, it's on 48 health. It's managing to get repaired up, but there's a lot of units now coming out. Crackety going to be looking to try and chase that Khan away. Khan doing a little bit of a roundabout, and indeed that trebuchet is going to be going down, and that's going to clear that Barbican position. And with that, with that traction trebuchet going down, I would almost be tempted to say, now is the time to drop down that keep. If there's ever been a time, it is now because that trebuchet is gone. It's going to take you at least like, okay, how long does it take to get another traction trebuchet out? 35 seconds. And by the time you see the keep, then you're going to have to queue that. Then the, the keep's going to be up. And then once the keep is up, that, that, that is when all your difficulties have just begun. Uh, I'm curious as to whether there's any more traction trebs out for the Viper. It does seem that there is one. I don't know exactly. Oh, it's up towards this northern position here. Uh, but now we see more and more knights coming through. And th this is not looking good for the Viper at all. There, there is no way that I, I think Viper holds on to this position. You can see it's struggling, and we just saw the ground move right there. I think you and I both know exactly what that is. There's Lancers coming in, but I can only suspect that there are villagers coming in, and indeed, there is a keep drop that is coming, so Crackety here is definitely playing this game perfectly. This is exactly how you play the matchup now. It, it, it's the weirdest matchup. All of a sudden, like, the tower rusher has become the tower rushed, and now Viper looking to try and rush up an outpost himself. You can see he's really just scrambling for ideas here. He's got almost no resources in the bank, just 12 villagers over here on gold but at the same time that Barbican still stands strong just firing off at the units down below it just pumping out damage non-stop you can see even these lances are continuing to take damage that keep going to be coming up any second there it is coming up now the card's still dead and those Lancers going to be looking to try and deny this keep. But just remember, there's Lancers coming out from, from Crackety. And Viper is really, really on the ropes right now. Uh, one of the things I would just point out as well is that Viper, obviously, he's a top five player. Crackety, he's, he's pretty good. He's top 100. He's not Conqueror, but he's top 100. But the... Typically, this matchup, you would say it's relatively favored towards the Mongols in the early game. And Kraken, he's just taken it and turned it on his head. An impressive thing. And I, I love the way that we're witnessing this Chinese meta develop because it's very, very difficult to deal with the kind of economy that kraken has got behind this village is coming out. It's a second keep drop that's coming down now. Kraken, he senses that there might be blood in the water. He's got to be careful here with, the, with these Lancers. The Lancers going to be able to come in. He needs to run a screen. And indeed, he does run that screen. The numbers here are still looking pretty decent for him. He's funneling in units. You can see he's got idols behind this as well but back towards the base of the viper those units continue to funnel in he's going to be able to fall back towards this keep if things go go awry but for the moment it looks to be pretty decent and those sheep going to continue falling back towards viper's base he's managed to set up his two town centers and now we're going to keep coming down on where a town center rather should be that with that uh, that town center being discovered i suspect the keep will get cancelled
Still, it looks like it's just... Okay, there we go. He's discovered it now. Second keep is up. It is safe. The Deer Stones is in a bit of a bad spot. And now the next keep is going to be coming up. The third keep on your face. That is correct. There is a base on your face. And it is the base of Crackety here. And Viper continues sitting in the backside now. Plenty of, lo plenty of Lancers coming in. Going to be hitting these villagers. These villagers look to evacuate. Crackety sitting on 118 villagers right now. The Viper sitting on 45. Things are not looking pretty for the snake, the goat, whatever animal you want to call him but that is for sure it is not looking good right now he's somehow managing to keep his head above water but i can't help but feel like he's been dragged down by a 300 kilogram stone right now because that thing does not look like it is coming back up third keep is now up for crackety here does he have enough for a fourth keep don't do him like that crackety no he doesn't but you can just see it has just been a constant name of the game here the theme here has just been based on your face this entire game and now a stone wall coming up down towards the south he says viper you can run but you cannot hide and he walls in this south part down towards this position and says you're not running down here though i think he might need to to, uh, to wall this part in as well i think he might be able to get through that now we see more outposts encroaching on this south side crackety here looking very very strong in this position starting to stack up that that uh, food as well picking up relics behind this he's just doing everything by the book right now an absolute clinic being put on by crackety and i love the way this matchup is developing we have seen tower rush after barbican rush to muslim pulled it off in the golden league and now we see it come into the ladder and it is just looking absolutely beautiful there is a traction trebuchet that has finally made its way out that's going to be causing a little bit of shenanigans down for this outpost you can see it's managing to get up but it's only got about half the health on it more outposts coming up. Villagers got to be careful. You can see they've just been rallied towards that southern position. But the lantern numbers are starting to look better for Crackety. Over on Viper's side, he's trying his best. 38 villagers still for him. He's got plenty of sheep under the town center. He's got all of his pastures. He's just got no villagers. And it feels really bad, man. It feels really, really bad, man. We'll take a look at his upgrades and see where he's at right now. It looks like no improved wheelbarrows. A, a, a bit of a rare upgrade to see, to be honest. But now the Viper looks to try and hold on. We'll check in over with Crackety and see exactly what he's got up in up his sleeve. Doesn't look like any Imperial Age going to be coming through just yet. Slowly a farm transition. And it looks like, we, interestingly, no granaries coming through for Crackety. How many farms do we have? We've got 56 farms coming through for Crackety. That is a huge amount of farms, and I love that. I think that's such a smart play because it guarantees that he's going to be able to hit Imperial shortly because that food economy is just naturally going to be building up. But now Crackety moving through towards the Viper's base. Viper trying his best to put down more and more outposts. The Springwood in place when it's coming through on them. He's trying his best to hold on. He's really stuck in between a rock and a hard place right now. Crackety here is definitely putting the pedal to the metal and more and more Lancers coming through, but Viper trying his best to hold on. Trebuchet's on the backside. You can see Crackety going straight for them. This is exactly what you want to be doing. Focus down these traction trebuchets and it just allows you to push up even further. And we can see that he's managed to cancel out the majority of this push down towards the south because of those trebuchets. If they hadn't been out, he'd be able to establish himself in this little foothold on the south side and force Viper into an even more awkward position. But Viper still holding on, still fighting. He knows he's up against a diamond player. He's going to lose a lot of points if he loses this game. He knows how important it is to win. And the question is going to be whether Kraken is going to be able to close it out, whether he knows how to close it out because this matchup can be one of those matchups that's very difficult to close out. We we now see a trebuchet going to be coming out for Crackety here, which is the correct play for Crackety. Ideally, what you could even do is look to drop down a siege workshop on your front line and get that traction trebuchet out. Maybe even bring an Imperial official up, look to supervise it because those trebuchets, they're awfully slow, especially when you don't have that greased axles upgrade. It's going to be quite the march out towards this position over on the eastern side of the map. Viper now looking to expand up towards the north. We can see the Gur coming in. No villagers up there just yet. He's got berries up there that are available, but just remember, he's got plenty of sheep underneath that town center it looks like he's now moved out towards that second town center because well let's just put it this way there's there is a base in his face and viper is really struggling stuck up against the wall i don't think there's any way he pulls himself out of this hole at all 40 villagers for him and you can see the village account is just dwindling it's barely making itself even increase at this point and now viper he's, he's looking to go for a raid but he knows that he can't he just gets one shot immediately he's like mm, okay all right i'm not gonna go that way i guess i i guess i'll go through the stone wall i guess but you can see like even in the event that he goes through something like there's just a giant wall down towards this position actually i don't think that is walled in 100%? I'm not sure. Uvu is depleted. Uvu is depleted. I love that sound. <laughs> but now Crackety is going to begin bringing that trebuchet out. You can see it's quite a slow march for that trebuchet to get out over here. And Imperial Age is coming through for Crackety. We'll take a look and see whether we can spot that landmark coming down. There it is on the front. Uh, so it seems like there's not a lot of room here uh, for... for 
archery ranges to come down a fair bit of natural resources. Normally, you'd see the Spirit Way come down somewhere like here, so we can put archery ranges around it. But now it sounds like players are exchanging words. You can hear it in the in the uh, in the replay file. So I, I suspect there might be a good game called imminently, and indeed there is a good game. Is called Crackity is victorious. The Viper taps out, and now the question must be asked: Is the Chinese Barbican Rush back? Because I damn well think it might be.